All right. Well, I am here. Uh, why have I forgotten your name already? Um, Cora. Cora, that's right. Cora, not Dora. This is Cora's Roadmap to Success. Um, this is pretty unusual. She barks and growls when people do things that she doesn't uh, like. Normally, the last thing I would ever tell you is to put her on somebody's lap, but she is doing it from a somewhat insecure way, uh, position. So if I put her down, she will start barking away. So when you have guests come over, as long as your guest is comfortable, and I would, again, create stage scenarios where the guests can come over and these guests are in on it with you. This is a great excuse to look through your phone, your uh, phone, uh, your contact list, people you haven't seen in a while. You're like, hey, we haven't seen you in forever. You know, we have this new dog you haven't met. She, she's kind of a little bit particular with new people. And we had a dog psychologist who came by and actually said we need to practice. If you come over, we can get a, you know, uh, some beer. We got some Duff beer for you or whatever it is and come over and hang out a little bit and get, help us with the dog. Now, uh, one of the things that I did was I took, for one of the first things I did is I took her for a walk by myself. Now, uh, she is really protective and possessive around the guardians. You want to shift on this way? We can do that for you, but I'm not going to let you down until this video is done because it will not sound very good with you barking so much. So basically, if we have guests come over, what we'd like the guests to do is text us when they're close um, and meet, her out, meet them outside. Use the martingale and the special twist of the collar. So you attach the leash here with the martingale loop on the spine. Take the leash and run it behind both front legs, not in between, behind both front legs like a U-shape, and then always go towards the head through with a leash. Um, and then make sure it's in our armpits and not drifting down here. Uh, and I have five rules for a structured walk on my website. I invite you to go click on go to dogmanproblems.com, click on dog training tips. And on, on a desktop or a laptop, on the right side of the page, there's a search box. If you're on your phone, the search box will be at the bottom of the listings, but there's also a email sign-up. So that'll be the lowest one, you want the one above that. Type in structured walk and it'll explain how to use a special twist of leash and the five rules for a structured walk. So basically what you do is have uh, your uh, friend, who's, who's your helper friend, text you when they're getting close. You go outside and you meet outside. And what I would have you do is start walking towards the corner where you have the martingale leash all set up. And so you have a person, the dog, and a person. It's kind of like a person-dog sandwich. And then basically, some time before you get to the corner, you're going to very quietly call, uh, give the, uh, your guest the leash. Make sure they put their hand through the leash and wrap it at least once or however many times are necessary. If they hold it and the dog gets away, she's not going to come back to somebody she doesn't know that well. So if we hold, uh, she's a small dog, she's not going to be able to pull us down. So basically, um, and then basically you stop at the corner and then they continue walking her one or two blocks by themselves. Now I'd give them a treat pouch full of all sorts of great treats. She did not like taking the treats on the very busy street. I think she's nervous about that. Um, and so basically when you get off the main street, if you're one of the, the, the guest helpers who's watching, so haven't watched this video, it makes it easier. Um, basically every once in a while, try to stop on a corner. If there's some steps, try to stop, grab a seat and just kind of sit for a minute. Don't try to call her or pet her or do anything. Just kind of hang out and if she looks at you, shows any interest, you can give her a treat and then get up and walk. So you ideally would like to sit down about two or three times on this one or two block walk before you get back in. Now, so this way the dog gets to meet you, meet guests independent of the guardians who she thinks it's her job to protect. And she, they get to build a rapport with her. Dogs usually like walking, so it's associated with something the dog enjoys. Now when you're doing this, make sure you keep the leash short and the dog is next to you on either the right side or left side, whichever side the guardians say they prefer. Um, don't let her go in front because that's the leadership role. And if she lags behind, just kind of let your arm go limp and keep going. Um, and the idea is we want her just walking next to you. I uh, don't want to correct her with a lot with the leash. We don't want to punish her or anything. The whole idea for this is to be a positive experience. Now, also, every once in a while, I'd stop if she's taking treats. We stop, tell her to sit when she sits, pop a treat in her mouth and say the word sit. Not good sit, just sit. And then try to get her to sit like me five or ten times before you get back. When you come into the place, keep her on the leash. And keep the leash, and step on the leash maybe about this far away from where it attaches to her collar. So she doesn't have the ability to run away. Because what she's going to do is move away and bark at them. If they continue, they can have them pick her up or you can pick her up and put her in their lap like she's doing here. What we want her to do is practice being around a guest without reacting. And like I said, this is the last thing I would normally do because this is typically a reward. I don't think she's barking because she's insecure about barking at me while she's this close to the guest. So I think if you create a positive association, then you come in and you also want to carry over. We'd like to have the whole visit where she hasn't barked or growled at them once. And so the, it's better to have a shorter visit than a longer visit. So if you have friends that live in the neighborhood, those would be the ideal first people that I would go to. Also keep note if there are, okay, let's not do that on TV. Um, if there are um, certain people that she, you notice she does react to, 
start a list on your phone. And again, it could be a racial thing. It's not a racist. It's just people with darker colored, more melatonin in their skin. She's just not comfortable with. But if you start noticing and uh, journaling this, you might notice, you know, every time you send me one of those like uh, biker chains that's attached to their wallet, those people she barks at. People with a dreadlocks or a scar for Mexican woman or whatever it is. And so that if you notice what these things are, then you can help her practice being around them. Now to do this, what I usually do is I try to recreate, anytime the dog didn't misbehaves, I try to recreate the situation in the easiest version possible so I can help the dog practice. So what I typically do is I grab one of these Tricky Trainer Chicken Liver Treats like I have here. It's a pellet. This has been in my, wall, uh, my deal for a while, so I'm going to smash it against my, arm, uh, my knee. I make it flat like a pancake, and I'm going to let her nibble on it. Now, right now, she's not used to doing it, so I'm going to smash it even more so that she gets a little piece, and she gets used to chewing on it. The whole reason I, I, I smash it is I want her to get it in little sections as opposed to getting the whole thing in one bite. And the idea is eventually that I can go like this, and have her looking while she's chewing, nibbling on it, and she's looking directly at the stimulus. So we mentioned there was a guy at the park that uh, stretches, and she freaks out. She doesn't like that guy doing that. And again, all this stuff comes from her thinking that she's in charge of the world. You're not. Um, and so what we do is we go to the park, and as we're approaching the guy, we're kind of paying attention, watching the dog out of the corner of our eye. And she starts lagging behind. She gets stiff. She starts breathing heavy. She holds her breath. Her ears go forward or far back. She lifts her legs. She turns her head away. She uh, yawns. Um, she digs her feet in, trying not to go there. Those are all her warning signals. She's saying, I'm getting close to reacting. Now, we don't want her to react at all. That's crucial for this. So basically what we do, yes, I know, you got ants in your pants, you'll get down in a sec. Um, so we, we're gonna approach and we're gonna take note when we get to like 40 feet or whatever the distance is when she starts showing those signs I just talked about, then we're gonna turn around and walk away, take note of how close we are. Let's say we're at 30 feet. Turn and walk around about 10 feet away then come back and come back. This time, instead of stopping at going all the way to 30 feet, we might stop at 31 feet, a little bit before she feels the need to react. Then what I'm gonna do is, to, is smash that treat and have her nibble on the treat while she's looking at the person. Now, if she won't take the treat or won't sit, that's her indication that she's still too close. The idea is to get as close as you can without her reacting and while she will engage and take a treat. So then uh, you let her chew on one or two treats here, then you talk about 10 feet back and walk, and then you approach from this angle and you approach from another angle. So eventually you're gonna go all the way around this person, but you're always stopping at 31 feet. And then you go out and the rest of your walk. And if you take note of when that person's there, people are pretty consistent. They'll probably be there the same time the next day. So you kinda, of, if your schedule allows it, go there again, but this time maybe we go to 30 feet. Maybe we try to do it at 29 feet. And if she still sits and takes a treat, you can keep pushing a little bit further, but don't push too far. If she reacts, you push way too far. If she starts getting stiff or the signals I mentioned earlier, that's when you're getting close to the breaking point. But the test is, will she sit and take a treat? So you keep on practicing until she wants to sit or take the treat anymore, and then you're gonna back up 10 steps, come back to whatever that distance was, and go all the way around and approaching from all those different angles. Eventually, it gets to the point where you would be right next to the person. And then you can maybe, uh, you know, if, you're, if the person's chatty, ask them, you know, hey, would you mind if we you know, followed you as you leave the park? And so if you walk behind them, whoever forgot who are in front is the leader. So I'd give them, if the person's amicable, give them like 10 treats. Just say like every three steps we just drop a treat. So then as they're walking, they're in the follow-up position, and this person's dropping treats, and she's licking them up. So you might have to be further and further away before she'll take the treat and watch where they are so you can point them out for her. But after a while, if she follows this person, and he's dropping treats or she's dropping treats. It's like, this is the Pied Piper of treats. I like following these people. I like people stretching at the park. That's the whole point is we're just making a positive association. Now, because um, I went over the petting with a purpose and passive training, so I'm not going to talk about it in this video. However, those things are crucial for her. She is, it goes to daycare. She's not aggressive or reactive to other dogs. When she's with her guardian, she is. Um, she like, doesn't mind sniffing them, which is, puts her in the dominant position. But if they sniff her, she doesn't like that. So all these things tell me, uh, we have guests come over, she's reactive. When I took her on a walk, she was not doing a lot of the same things that she does when I'm here with her guardians. All these things tell me that it's, she thinks her job is to guard or protect the humans. So what we want to do is essentially demote her. One of the ways we went over doing that is to establish a healthy leader-follower dynamic. And I did that, or we talked about that, by enforcing rules consistently. Some of the rules would be not being allowed in the furniture for at least 66 days. And that's all my clients hear is, you said 66 days. I said 66 days minimum, probably longer than that. 
Uh, we want to form that positive behavior pattern. To prevent her from getting on the couch, I would recommend getting those X mats. After about a month or a month and a half or two months, when she's not even trying to do it, take one of them off and reposition them so that you know, you're kind of equal space between them. And after another month, take the next one off. Eventually, it gets to the point where you can tear them in half and have only two of them there, and she's just out of a behavior pattern of getting on the couch. Now, I would get the dog bed that you had, uh, that you have in her other kennel. I would put it right there in front of the TV. And I have videos that explain how to teach a dog to go to the dog bed on command. In front of the TV is the best place because the dog's like, wow, look at them. They're just looking at me all day long. We're really just watching the TV and behind the dog. So um, that would, anytime I take her the furniture, I always like to give them the, the dog bed at the same time. Um, uh, also, she has to sit before we let her out the door. Remember, we're going to walk away each time she doesn't say, sit within that three seconds of the first time we say it. And not just for the door, but for everything. Get out of a habit of saying the command word multiple times because that just waters down your authority. So and look for situations like the door where we can put the, what the dog wants at the end of the equation as the reward. So we, the, I don't want to go outside. The dog does. I go to the door and I say sit. If she sits within three seconds, I open the door as soon as her butt hits the ground. She doesn't, I walk away and sit down for one minute, then I go back and tell her to sit again. If she doesn't sit, I would walk away. If she, uh, after, and then I would wait two minutes. Next time I'll walk away for four minutes and eight minutes. So we keep on double length of time, and she's like, but I wanna go outside. Well, then you have to do the smallest thing you do as a dog and sit. And if you can't be bothered to sit, I can't be bothered to open the door. Eventually, she'll go sit at the door as a way of saying she'd like to go outside, or when you tell her, she'll sit right away. At that point, I would start doing a sit before you go in, into the elevator, into the building, anywhere you go, she's got to sit before she goes through there. Uh, and then in both directions. Um, now, for the walk, remember to use the martingale, which I talked about already, and use the uh, structure, the, the special twist of the leash, and get 10 treats in the beginning of the walk, take no more than five steps 10 times in a row, and each time you stop, tell her to sit. When she sits, pop a treat in her mouth and say the word sit, then take up to five steps again. It's a nice way to start your walk and start getting her to pay attention to you as opposed to paying attention to everybody that she perceives to be a threat to you. Um, all right, um, let me see. Also, we went over uh, ex being, not being excited for the leash. Um, if you want to, if you want to find, watch a video of that, I went through a dog, I think his name is Odie. Can't remember exactly, but basically he's a little, I think a Jack Russell. Um, but, and it's a picture of him with his, his chin on the couch. And it's kind of a funny picture. But basically just go through dog training tips on doggunproblems.com and look for, uh, you can probably just search for uh, uh, calm leash and this will video will come up or this write up will come up and watch it. The idea is to practice leashing the dog up when you're not actually going for a walk and stopping the process anytime the dog gets excited. Speaking of excitement, when we come home, if the dog's excited, ignore. Don't look at him her, excuse me, don't pet her, don't talk to her, don't give her any commands, act like she's invisible. And after a while, she'll kind of calm down. When she does, reach for her and she'll start wiggling. Pull your arm back and continue your business. No communication. You communicate through your movements. When you're calm, you're very attractive, man. I want to pet you. You get excited, you become invisible. It takes a lot of repetition, but eventually she'll learn, oh, I got to sit quietly and that will get me attention. But if we come home and we pet her, we're gonna make, remember anything our dog's doing when we pet it was what we're gonna excite or uh, amplify. So we'll make our dog more excited and the more excited she gets, the more likely she is to make mistakes. But also remember, don't pet her if she's fearful or reactive or anything. You can lay your hand on her and let her know I'm here with you. But as soon as you start petting, you're gonna make it worse. Now, speaking of petting, one of the things you wanna do is pet your dog when she is, I know, let me get you settled. When she's nice and relaxed, which she's not now, but again, she'll start barking. But let's say you're watching TV and she's nice and relaxed at your feet. Settle. Or zen or chill or chillax and whatever the word is you want to use. So the only time she hears that now is when she is completely relaxed. Then later on, when a guest comes over and she starts barking whatever, we can say chill or settle or whatever it is, and she actually understands what we want. Now, unless we're enforcing rules consistently, She's not going to be uh, willing to acquiesce to that. She's going to disagree. So that's really important. So going back to the rules, furniture, number one. Number two, if we're eating at this table here, she should not be allowed in the L between the couch and the table. When we're throwing food in the kitchen, she should not be allowed in the kitchen. I forgot. I just remember that we, I forgot. To, I promised to show the guardians how to do that. I'm going to show them how to do this afterwards. So you need those escalating consequences. You're going to march deliberately at the dog until the dog uh, turns sideways, unless the dog hasn't vacated the area. Then you keep on walking at the dog until they get to the limit, and you stop at the border. And then when you, uh, the, then the key is, if I've done that, let's say I march at the dog, the dog's there, I wait for the dog to stop moving around. Once it stops moving, I take two steps backwards. Left and right, and then step. 
when you do this, the dog's probably going to start coming forward. You rush back, but you stop the line. And you're going to do this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, till eventually you take the two steps back. So take two steps and make sure you pause after the two steps. She'll stay put. Then take another two steps backwards and pause again. The whole time, you're keeping your hips pointed directly at the dog. Now, I have a video on my website, a, hunt, a bunch of videos that show this, but I know of one with a great name. So it's basically, uh, I would just search for uh, invisible line on doggonproblems.com and then practice this. When one of you is going to have a snack here, the other one could practice making her stay off of the, ca off of the, uh, the, the rug here. Same thing with the kitchen. So the idea is to set up situations where we can help the dog practice the behavior we want when we're not doing the real deal. If we're trying to be a, a, get, a host when a guest comes over and then the dog is misbehaving, we're trying to serve two masters and it's not going to go very well. So what we want to do is arrange to have the guest come over like I talked about at the beginning of this video, who's in on it with us. So that way we don't have to give them all their attention and hold their hand. They're a matter of fact, oh, what should I do now? Why don't you try standing up? The dog stands up and then we can apply the consequence or whatever it is or let her chew on the treat while she's watching the person stand up. Whenever I have a problem or the dog fails, I make a list of, or uh, I identify what it is. I break it down in individual steps in the easiest version possible. So when I started doing this in the garage, what, and I started doing it because some dogs are reactive when a, dog st when a person stands up because it's more authoritative. I think for her, she was barking because she wants the person to continue petting her. I think it's petulance in her case. Um, but what I do is I try to do that first step over and over. So I might like let the dog chew on it. And again, uh, we have a little bit of a gap under the door. One of the things she reacts to is people walking by the door. Well, we might have a guest come over and help us with that. So put her on a leash because if she has a, if she can run around, she'll get more aroused. So put her on a leash and step on the leash about right over here where the kennel is. And then have to tell your friend. And you're going to see the movement through the underneath the door. You hold the treat here. She watches the person go by. And, and she's getting chewing on the treat while she watches them. Then after she gets to the point where she's relaxed, you take another step closer, closer, closer. Eventually, you're going to be right there, so close you can't even see the gap under the deal. The next stage that I do, though, is, is to tr create uh, um, an association so the presence of that person means I'm going to get a treat. The reason we do the treat first while the stimulus is happening is to stop her from reacting and, and preoccupy her and to create a positive association. Well, then after a while, what you, after you practice enough, then what you do is as, as the person goes half, maybe a step, so you see a little bit of the shadow, then you give her the full treat. Now you're holding it, you're talking her mouth. And, and by the time she gets done chewing it, to bark at them, they're already gone. Then two steps, three steps, four steps. Eventually the idea is that if someone passes the door, then you put a treat in her mouth. And that way the person passing the door becomes almost like a hand signal for you're about to get a treat. So instead of looking at that as something that's a negative that I have to disagree with, I look at it as a positive. That's something that's good going to happen to me. But again, these are all imperative on the dog having a healthy leader follower, respect for the leader follower dynamic. Um, okay, what else do we go over? The uh, four escalating consequences, I have videos for that as well. Uh, went over the focus exercise. The Guardians watched some of my videos and they started that, but it was inconsistent. You really need to gain momentum with that one. So I would do that and make sure you practice in different parts of your house. Find one of those videos that you like on my website and practice it. Each one of the Guardians practice it three times a day. Within a week, probably sooner, you should be able to get to that 15 second, second movement. Now remember, if she starts lunging, back up to what, what the previous step and practice that previous step till she's performing the way that we want on that step. Only then do we go to the next step. The first stage for this is to get to 15 seconds in the house, all over the different places, when there's no distractions. I know. The next stage is to practice outside on the deck when there's nobody in the alley and nothing crazy is going on. You have the smells and the sounds of being outside, so that's a slight distraction. It makes it harder. So we go back to one second, one second. But we can move faster, maybe at one second, one second for five treats, and one second, two seconds for five treats, and one second, three seconds for five treats. Um, the idea is to get to the 15 second focus out there within about, uh, within about two days. The last stage is to practice this when you're on a walk when there's nobody around. So as you're walking and there's nobody there, now we're, instead of waiting for her to look at us, we're gonna cue it. So we have a treat in our hand and there's nobody around, we say focus, she looks up at us and go one, one, and give her the treat. Actually, you use this hand. She's on this side. Boom, focus. And then eventually it gets a one, two seconds. Eventually it gets to the point where you're 15 seconds going like this and she's running into stuff because she's not paying attention to where she's going. She's focusing on you. So the idea for this one is it's, it, it's beneficial because it stops production of cortisol in her blood, but it also is a nice way to redirect her attention and distract her. So if you're walking down the street and there's another dog coming by and you see her start lower head and stare, say focus, she looks up at you. 
that you gives you, you a couple options. We can say focus and have her and take a left and walk down somebody's sidewalk or driveway to allow the other dog the ability to pass. And what I would probably do is walk there and then put her in a sit and then have her chew on the treats as she walks that dog pass and gradually get closer and closer to that sidewalk. Eventually, when you get to the point where you just take one or two steps and then do this while the dog passes, you're ready to probably try just doing just the focus and a walking focus. So as the dog's approaching, you say focus, and as the dog's passing, the idea is to not deliver the treat until the other dog is, a, is a equal with you or slightly past you. So then she goes, I'm gonna chew it really quick and yell at you. Oh, you're already gone, okay. And the idea is, again, she's practicing not reacting. And uh, now other things you can do, if there's a dog in the neighborhood she really doesn't like, parallel walk. There's probably, the guardians are laughing, there's probably a couple. So try to befriend your neighbors and just say, and, when you, and it's best to do this when you're without her. So when you're out, uh, you know, she's at home and you're just coming home from work and you see that person walk and letting their dog potty, you say, hey, that's a, I've been meaning to say, that's a beautiful dog. I never get to say anything. Our, our dog, uh, um, uh, Cora, is barks like crazy. This is a little white one. You might have seen us. Yeah, I'm sorry about it. We hired a dog behaviorist. They actually helped us. He said that one of the things we could do is actually walk together. Do you walk at the same time? Because we would love to walk with you and try to solve this problem so our dog isn't barking anymore if you'd be open to it. Most people would say, sure. So you might actually have to have Cora across the street where you're all walking, but make sure you're all walking in a line. We, whoever's in front is the leader. So if we're all walking inside, even if we're across the street, she sees that other dog, she hears the other dog, but she doesn't have the pressure of having to interact with the other dog. And after a while, what we do is we kind of, uh, um, I'm trying to do it while I'm holding her, instead we kind of do a triangle. So eventually we get gradually closer and closer and we let them walk, but there's no interaction during the walk. They just see and smell and hear each other, but they don't actually have the pressure of playing. And after you've done that enough time, when she's no longer reacting, her body language is nice and relaxed, she's not stiff, then you might try to let them sniff each other a, a little bit afterwards. Um, sometimes dogs like this, I, don't, I try to be force-free, but sometimes I will pick up the dog. If I know the other dog is, make sure, guarantee that the other dog is not going to nip, because that'll make it worse, I might offer the other dog her derriere and let them sniff. Whoever gets sniffed first is more subordinate. Now, if I do that, I would probably have somebody on this side giving her a treat first. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> there we go. Um, I have actually a little light in my in my bag, uh, but we just uh, it's 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 a dimming. You know, it's Southern California. We're trying to save energy and be uh, uh, be nice here uh, for the planet. All right. So um, so the idea is to recreate those situations and help her practice it. So we take away her fear. We create a positive association. At the same time, the guardians are flipping the leader follower dynamic in the home. My hope is that we don't need a follow up session. Sometimes we do. There's nothing wrong if we do. We'll just do that as a one hour session if we need to. But in this case, I am almost 100% certain that is once you guys flip the leader follower dynamic, you're going to see substantial results. And then if you use the petting with purpose and passive training we talked about above, that will also be a big benefit. Now remember, keep her calm, practice that leash. Practice a couple times without uh, going for the walk so we desensitize her from it. Uh, remember to give her a command word for potty. I know that she doesn't have access to the house, but just when you're out taking a walk, every time she starts to pee or poop, say business, or whatever the word is you want to use. When she gets done, pop a treat in her mouth and say business again. And on the walk, do not stop in places that she wants to pee on, otherwise, because she, she's one of those rare females that does mark. After a while, she'll get out of the habit of doing that, and as you flip the leader follower dynamic, it will seem inappropriate for her to mark, but it's gonna take a little bit of time to get there. Um, all right, uh, anything else we need to go over that I forgot to go over? I think that's it. All right, yeah. I do this a lot. Um, so um, basically, if you have any questions, make sure you let me know, because if I don't hear from you, um, I assume everything's going great. And also go to my website. There's thousands of videos there. I can find them for you, but there's plenty of stuff for uh, you to find if you need to. All right, well, this is Cora. Are we friends now? She's giving me a little bit of stink eye. That's okay. Well, this is Cora, and this is Cora's Roadmap to Success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog. Only sometimes you mean it.